So in Tears of the Kingdom, there's a lot of new we have learned over the last month, including obviously all the previews yesterday. But there's one thing from the previews I want to give extra attention to. It is something that I don't think is getting enough individual attention. And we're talking about how Tears of the Kingdom has actually improved things from Breath of the Wild. And we're not talking about like the new abilities, fusing, Ultra Hand. That stuff is awesome, and that's new. We're actually talking about issues that maybe we didn't complain that much about in Breath of the Wild, but probably should have, and how Nintendo flipped it on its head, realized it was a problem, and made it better in Tears of the Kingdom. Now, before I do that, i got to remind you, we do have a giveaway going on right now. We're a Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Nintendo Switch OLED Edition. Picking that one up tomorrow for you guys. Uh, we also have the Tears of the Kingdom Collector's Edition we're giving away and a pin from PAX East. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all the support. We're on our road to 133,000 subscribers right now to match 133 years of Nintendo. So I would appreciate if you would go ahead and hit the subscribe button and maybe hit the bell icon while you're at it. Now, Breath of the Wild's a masterpiece. It is my favorite game of all time. I have put more hours into that game this generation than any other video game in existence. I am just, I, I've always been a massive Zelda fan, and while before Breath of the Wild came out, my favorite game of all time was Secret of Mana, Breath of the Wild overtook it pretty quickly. Now, I got to actually go hands-on with the game back at E3 2016, so I had a pretty good idea that Breath of the Wild, based on hands-on impressions, had a chance to become my favorite game, and it pulled it off. And this is despite the fact that missing several traditional Zelda things that I love, but also it introduced so much more that I love even more than what I thought I loved Zelda for that I ended up really enjoying the game. But that doesn't mean there weren't little annoyances or minor things that could have used an improvement. And just looking at quality of life in general, Tears of the Kingdom has taken a lot of those minor annoyances and just completely eliminated them. So first off is the improved menu system, right? Now instead of using our right stick and just jamming it left and right, going through multiple pages of materials and stuff to get to where we want to be, you just use R and L and the inventory then just expands vertically instead of horizontally. And that alone just makes inventory management so much easier, even after sorting your inventory over and over in Breath of the Wild. It, it just is a little minor annoyance. I think it's something most of us just got used to. We just accepted this is how it works, but it still was just not really that intuitive. And obviously when you see things like how awesome this new menu system is, it, it makes you wonder why Nintendo can't seem to figure out better navigation and better uh, content suggestions and things like the eShop when they have people like the Zelda team just walking in, taking a system that functionally worked but was a little clunky and deciding we're going to completely overhaul that menu system and just make it so much better. Now, one thing they did remove from the menu system, of course, was, you know, your quest log, your activity log, right, where, where you're going to see what you need to do next. They were smart about this, actually, and put that in the map section. So, again, this just goes along with how they have redesign that UI and allowed us to just put the quests where they should be because oftentimes quests give us markers on maps and help tell us where to go so it makes sense for the quest log to be tied to the map area and obviously in the map area it mostly just works the map basically works exactly the same as it did before except now you can go between the sky and the ground because there's you know different maps and different regions now what I also thought was really cool for a quality of life improvement and this is one I didn't think that much about, but actually makes a lot of sense because, again, it's one of those things we just got used to in Breath of the Wild. But when Nintendo Life went and showed us how we can just quickly drop and pick up new items when our inventory is full, so essentially you can go pick up a weapon and it'll be like, oh, your inventory's full, right? And then you have to go into your inventory maybe to see the item level of your weapons, or you'd have to go into your quick select menu and just pick a weapon and then throw it. It was a little clunky, right? Like, we'd all just got used to it and accepted that's the way it was. Well, the Zelda team was like, that doesn't need to be the way it is. So you pick up a weapon, and it instantly will pop up the little quick select menu showing you your item levels and letting you quickly drop one and pick up the new one. I, I just find this to be really intuitive, and it is something that Nintendo, sh you know, just took Breath of the Wild and said, you know what, we can do that better. It's just a nice quality of life improvement. Uh, and then in general, 
they, they they did this thing to cooking, right? So, yeah, we have the new cooking pot and everything, and that's cool, and, and that's a quality of life improvement just to allow us to cook anywhere with an actual cooking pot because that's the one thing we couldn't carry was a cooking pot. Rather, we could start fires, but we couldn't put our own pot on top of the fires. So having a portable cooking pot is a nice quality of life improvement, and I like that it's limited to a one-time use because it makes it more strategic in how you use it. Instead of just dropping a cooking pot anywhere you want and making unlimited meals, it's kind of like, nah, you, it's like a one-time use thing. I'm I'm good with that, but and you can collect multiple of them, right? So it's not like, hey, you can only cook one meal. Well, if you collected like 99 of these things, you can make probably as many meals as you need. What I do find interesting, though, is what they did with the recipes, right? So we technically had recipes in Breath of the Wild, but it was clunky. It wasn't great. It wasn't fun to use, and it, it was a little weird to go through it. And a lot of people probably never even realized that there were recipes, right? Like, it just wasn't very fun to use. And what they did is they expanded upon that recipe system, giving us full images, uh, much easier to digest, much more pleasurable to go through, and apparently just easier to find. So if you've made a dish already or you learned a dish from somebody else, it's just going to be there and you're going to always know what it is. Now, one improvement I wish they would have added is when you open up the recipe menu, if you have the ingredients and want to make that recipe, they should have put a one button press to just cook that recipe if you have the needed ingredients. That is one improvement I wish they would have put in here. They didn't do it. Who knows if they do a third game in this Breath of the Wild style, maybe that's something they can look and do for a future quality of life improvement, but they still step the game up over Breath of the Wild and it's still a much appreciated addition. Besides that, they did another quality of life improvement that I think some people are either going to take or leave. I don't know. And this has to do with shooting arrows in slow-mo mode. So you know when you jump up in the air and you consume stamina and you're in slow-mo shooting arrows? Well, now your stamina only gets consumed if you shoot an arrow. And it appears to be about a third, a quarter to a third of your stamina wheel gets eight. So if you have just one stamina wheel, you could fire three, maybe four arrows uh, before your stamina wheel is depleted. So your stamina wheel isn't just like you're slowly falling and it's depleting your stamina the whole time. No, nope, it only gets depleted if you fire the arrow. If you re-put the arrow in your quiver, you don't lose that stamina. Uh, and, and I think a lot of this was to combat sky combat uh, because also what they did with this arrow ability is we've only got like a single screenshot of it, but you can now, that, that whole diving and shooting arrow thing, that we saw in the patent, that's real, that's a thing, and that's just an improvement to, to bow combat and bow aerial combat, and I feel like they changed how this worked because we are falling from such high heights, we don't want to waste all our stamina when we're necessarily in combat, you only want that stamina wasted in the sky if you're fighting something midair, it makes a lot of sense to handle things in the way that they chose to handle it here. So I also think it just happens to be an improvement in general, but it is something that they did different than Breath of the Wild, and that is just stupidly exciting for me. Now, maybe there's some other quality of life improvements you guys noticed in the previews. I don't remember there being a whole lot besides the stuff I mentioned. Everything else seems to just be brand new mechanics, brand new things in the world. But you guys let me know what you think about all this stuff down in the comments below because to me, that's the stuff that kind of stood out to me so much in these previews. It wasn't the new. We knew the new was going to be there. It's that they took the old and they said, we can do that better. I like that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.